Well, good morning all. It's March 18, 2003 and I'm in uh, the new Covent Garden flower market in uh, Vauxhall here in uh, London, which doubles as the Kentucky uh, Coach Park in London. And um, it's about 6am and I'm just about to embark on my final Kentucky tour. So um, I thought we'd get a video diary of this trip, but anyway, a little bit of a look around Europe for the last time. As I said, this is where Kentucky keeps the coaches. Spent some time here. Last three years, that's for sure. Cleaning and carrying on. Yeah, so on the way from the coach park uh, to the Royal National Hotel, we go past such uh, famous sites as the Houses of Parliament and Big Ben. This, of course, is the Thames. Totally useless. There is totally no. On the way to Amsterdam now. That's my tour manager MJ getting a hot dog here. Day two in Amsterdam. Of course, everyone knows that Amsterdam is famous for its liberal, uh, well, marijuana laws, uh, trams, bikes, bollards in the middle of the road, and uh, of course, dikes and canals. But for uh, us Kentucky drivers, it's also known for Febo. And we're going to go and have a look at a Febo fast food joint right now. Now, MJ's Dutch, and she's got, uh, what exactly is that? It's a hot dog. Well, what is it on top of it though? It is pickles, mustard and tomato ketchup. That's how they do it here. And it's very good. And the mustard, the tomato ketchup and the mayo is simply sensational. Yep. Okay. I also forgot to mention of course that it's, Amsterdam is pretty famous for its liberal laws on uh, things like uh, prostitution and that sort of stuff. It's very highly regulated. This is the fever. As I say, Kentucky drivers can tell you all about it. What you do is, you dive in your pocket for whatever change. Some blokes organise change before they go, of course. I've got coach keys galore, so it's a vending system with hot food. Even in America, I would say. For example, croquet, rice and shit has all sorts of vegetables, mashed vegetables and stuff out. It's absolutely delicious. Like uh, one euro. Now it's hot, it's warm. Mmm, delicious. Now, I don't know how long I've been in here, I don't want to know. But it's delicious. Yeah, burgers and stuff, fries, it's all good. One final pick up here in Amsterdam. One last look at Amsterdam. We're on our way to the Rhine Valley. Right, Jack. In Germany. Yeah, we've got a bit of a delayed departure, but uh, we're still aiming to leave on time. So, uh, we'll be right. Yeah, the bikes in Amsterdam. Enough to give you the shits, I'll tell you that. The legally parked cars in the bus lane. Alrighty, we're, uh, we're in the Rhine Valley. Which uh, is named such because of the Rhine River. Which uh, we're driving along. We're about 25 kilometres from our night stop in St. Gawar. This area is littered with. Uh, and fortresses and stuff like that which were built quite some time ago obviously. This is uh, this town's called Bopard and it's full of old relics and buildings like that in ruin but are still here. And uh, a couple of our hotels that we stay at, some of our tours are down at Bombay, which is right on the right on the river. It's one of the prettier places in Germany around here. Nice churches and things like that. Well this is one final look at Hotel Montags, which is where we stay here in the Rhine Valley. Went on this uh, 12 day reverse tour of Europe. Castle up on the hill there overlooking the uh, 
Rhine River. Quite a, uh, quite a current here on the Rhine as you can see, which would make uh, swimming to the other side uh, not too safe. One of the largest rivers in Europe. It's March 20, uh, 2003, and we're here in the Opera House in Munich. And uh, we're having a few drinks. Me personally, I'm eating a pork knuckle with potato dumpling. We're all having a grand time here. My last time in Munich, I've been here for two Otoa Fest, but this is the traditional Opera House that Hitler did all his speeches in in uh, the 20s. And uh, we're going to have a bit, a bit of a look shortly. concentration camp once again for the last time. Um, one of the things I'll take away from all this time I've spent in Europe is the sheer amount of concentration camps, war memorials, battlefields, um, war cemeteries, things like that. The amount of horror that has gone on in this part of the world is, especially in the last 100, 150 years, is just amazing. Uh, but hopefully it wasn't all for nothing. As this little uh, line here behind me says, and I quote, by the example of those who were exterminated here between 1933 and 1945 because they resisted Nazism, helped to unite the living for the defence of peace and freedom in respect for their fellow men. stop in Germany, maybe forever, isn't it, MJ? Yes, it is. So we're rocked up in Garmisch Partenkirchen and we're having a nice lunch. Fries and sausages. Bratwurst and pommes frites. And you have? Deep fried camembert, cranberry sauce and toast. And this is a really nice little gas style restaurant, isn't it? Very and look at the decor. Very traditional in this part of the world. <coughs> and crew down there. <laughs> and this is the view out of the front of the restaurant. Beautiful little part of the world. I've only ever stopped here twice. And of course, American capitalism knows no bounds. the Austrian border. Visually stimulating here in Austria. Oh, that's ahead of us. 
Let's see, I've got a tractor. This is typical. Oh, I'm just going to blast straight past the young man. Oh, it's driving there, Jago. He's got some twists and turns today. Earn my money today. Needless to say, a beautiful part of the world. Tractor. <laughs> a lot of farming communities around here. <laughs> this is the this is the quaint little gas stop that we stay here in Itter. Hey puppy dog. It's alright, I'm not gonna shoot ya. <laughs> not too sure about the camera, are you sweetie? It's a little galore extraordinaire up at its end. It's the biggest hits I've ever had. I've eaten half of it. Hello, Leone. Hello, Jack. Can I recognise the Leone from my G League tour? Everyone's in love with her. And that's a loafer. That's Aaron Payne. He's a tour manager, but he never tour manages when I've seen him. And that's Andy and Hansi at the bar here. That was mum. Signing off for the evening. I'm off for the evening. I'm gonna go to bed now. I've got to watch mine. Okay. Had a few vinos and that's enough of that. Nice one, mate. Go to Venice tomorrow. Saturday, March 22, 2003. We're in uh, Piazza San Marco, Venezia, St. Mark Square in Venice. Highlighted, of course, by the uh, superb bell tower and Doge's Palace. Everybody, we're at the moment we're in Venice. Uh, in front of you, you can see uh, the main water where you come in from Greece. Just off to your right hand side is the Grand Canal. The big church you can see is the Santa Maria della Salute. We're actually uh, now doing something very illegal. We're on top of the Hotel Daniela. We're not residents here, so we're not really supposed to be here, but this is where you get one of the best views from Venice. We sneaked past reception. Walked in as though we uh, looked like we owned the place. It seemed to work. And as it is, this area, the terrace we're on here, is where you sit and have drinks in the summer. And uh, it's closed and we're snuck out here. So before we get kicked out, we thought we'd get some video. So this is Daniela, very famous for the filming of the movie Only You with Robert Downey Jr. and Marissa Tomei. There you go. Let's have a look at that when we get home. At some considerable expense. It's my last time here in Venezia. Well, for a long, long time, I'd say. It's my 20th, something like that, 20 times I've been here. And we decided to have uh, coffee on St. Mark Square. As you can see, it's all all they just order coffee and tomato juice and all this. But it's all good. It's all good. The sun's starting to go down a bit. It's uh, quite a pleasant evening. It's a bit chilly, but nothing you wouldn't expect for March. And uh, we're going to go for a gondola ride after this, and then after that for dinner, and then back to the lovely Tronchetto Coach Park, and the, the one magical mystery tour continues to our hotel tonight, which is over near Padova. So it's all good, and then tomorrow it's off to Roma, where uh, I get a coach free day the next day. It's all good. So, um... Just to briefly explain the costs of our very nice afternoon in Venice, we in fact do get paid to sit here and sit in my square and drink. We just paid $14 for a coffee, another $16 for a tomato juice, and then for the lovely musicians we pay another $18 just to sit here. Aussie dollars. So the total of this is $50 for two drinks. <laughs> lovely. Time to go for a gondola ride here in uh, from yeah. the main, when we were staying here at the bridge, we come back through the main. <laughs> Past the uh, Venice version of the Guggenheim collection, the other ones in DC. Up ahead, this bridge is <laughs> academia, wooden bridge. 
houses are covered yeah, in sand. And these are one of the very modern <laughs> public water transport vehicles here in uh, Venice. It must smell nice now, I tell. <laughs> it's uh, 7 pm now, we reckon it's about 5 or 6 degrees. Take me there. So says our expert weatherman here, Pugsley, who's from Calgarin in the wheat belt. He knows all things. <laughs> Take him to the green. The water police, for some reason, have their lights on. There's nothing unusual for Italy. They like people to know that they're around. One last look at St Mark's Square. This time in the evening, it's about 9 p.m. Alrighty, we're at Fabro uh, service stop, which is halfway between Florence and Rome, and we stopped for a toilet break. And we're going to go and see if my mate Maximilian is working in here. It's our favourite service stop. Is back. Yeah. <laughs> it's my last tour, so I have the video yes. camera out. She told me that you're on last tour. So we stopped to say hello. And you're coming back in Australia. Uh, go back to yeah. Australia, yeah. yeah. So That's good to know in Australia, the weather. The weather is perfect though in Australia at the moment. Now? Now? Well, yeah, March, still very warm and doesn't get cold till June. So, come back to say goodbye to February. Europe is coming to winter. Yeah, uh, warmer. Summer, yeah, it's warm. yeah. This time of year for a while will be the same. Not today. No, no. Yeah, it's good. Very good today. There's more. <laughs> but you know, with the shirt, there's... Yeah, you yeah, know. It's not white shirt. Long. Big sun through the windscreen. <coughs> very hot. Yeah. Very hot. This is for you me. Drink, yes. Uh -huh. Remember, when you drink this, oh, you may think it's, uh, maybe, yeah, okay. maybe I don't even drink. Maybe I keep it as a souvenir yeah. on my bar. Oh. And I always say, it's Maximilian. This is coming from Umbria. That's very good. This is the Chianti. Oh. Okay? You're, you're a I fine man. Back. Very, gracias. Gracias. It's been a lot of fun coming here over the years. <laughs> very good. Very good. And you have the Thank best you. lasagna of any services. Yes. Your lasagna Thank is very good. Thank you. Good morning. No, Australia. That's it. Okay. That's for you. Remember, uh, I give the bag. Oh. <laughs> I will think of you. That's the bag. If you're coming back in Italy, yeah. you remember to me. Oh, so okay? So you can remember to see me. Thank you very much. Good. Maybe maybe we'll see you. Well, maybe you will. Maybe you will. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. See you. Well, I've left Rome for the last time, and we're now in uh, Firenze, Florence, uh, which is the nicest of the Italian cities that we go to. Uh, we're here for a quick look. I have the group photo here up on uh, Piazza Michelangelo. That's the Duomo you can see over there. Uh, yes, the rolling hills of Tuscany. That's your David is housed over there. And down there, that structure to the left of screen is a water tower. And that's where we do the drop-offs and the pick-up in the coach. Right next to the river Arno. <coughs> Such name because they're Arno fish. Very nice, Gazza. Nice. nice. So I live one in Perth. Yeah, cheers. Hey, hey. <laughs> Let's go rock stuff. Yeah, I'm doing it. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.
<laughs> All in the name of fun. All in the name of fun. <laughs> Let's do it. All right, guys. This is a replica of Michelangelo's David out here in the uh, Piazza Michelangelo. Everyone's over in town. You're going to slip it in where? With the other wine. With the other wine. Oh, it's Trafalgar coming through. Trafalgar coming through. Yeah, no problem champs. We'll yeah, put that underneath you. for you. Uh, Trafalgar is our sister company, so we know we, uh, okay. it's a bit late today. Come on, Halloween. All right. We are in Firenze. Gosh, the only. They're like one of the first cameras that ever came out. <laughs> well, you got no idea where the very first video camera I ever had was the size of a truck. <laughs> you used to have to carry a big video recorder over your shoulder. Well, we're now in uh, Florence. This is the only good city in Italy. So we're uh, enjoying some vino rosso and, vino rosso. and pizza. I've just had pizza, I've had calzone. Having a glorious sunny afternoon. This is Eddie. It is a hey, beautiful mate. afternoon. And this is the lovely Kiri Phillips. Last time I vino, mean, might have to order some more I think. So, oh, she's got to go and find a restaurant. No, I'm going to go shop. She's got to go and find a restaurant before Vino, Paolo gets hold of you for Vino. Oh, thank you. I'm mixing mine with water because I'm more shandy. Oh, that's right. That's the Santa Croce Church. Here in one of the main squares in Florence. On a beautiful day. As it has been the whole tour. You wouldn't believe it's March. In Europe. There's a lack of coach parking here in Florence, and I always say if you can't beat them, join them. This is my favourite parking spot. It's right next to the river here, it's just down from the pickup point. As you can see, it's right next to the road here. But here they all come. And it's very conveniently about uh, 10 minutes walk from the centre of town, whereas the uh, coach park's miles away. Well, it's about 8 o'clock in the evening. That building uh, across through the trees there, which is slightly illuminated, is Chatosa Monastery. Um, it's a few hundred years old. They filmed In the Name of the Rose, starring Sean Connery and Christian Slater over there. The campsite, interestingly enough, is not too far away. This is uh, Chatosa Restaurant, where the Kentucky Hotel tours have their optional dinners. And in the summertime, being that it's March 25 today, in the summertime it really pumps upstairs here but we've got our dinner downstairs tonight and it's uh, a really good evening let's go and have a look
lasagna. Big juicy steak. Grazie Amadeo. Very good. Get a load of the size of it. This is the best steak I've ever had in my life. This is the best fucking steak in Fernando, this is outstanding. And Fernando has taught me about not putting a sauce on the steak. Now why don't you put any sauce like a pepper sauce or mushroom sauce? Can you explain to everyone in Perth why don't you put a sauce on a steak? It's because it's like if you put the water in the, in the wine, in the good wine. Or, what was the other things you told me? Um, He's under pressure now. Seafood with uh, cheese. Cheese this and seafood. seafood. No. no good. Well, this is uh, particularly the best fucking steak that I've ever had. in northern Italy today near the Swiss border and uh, we're on the western side of Milan, fashion capital of the world but that is the Alfa Romeo administrative headquarters, the actual factories down near Naples to the south. My last Italian service stop ever and if you think I'm not happy about it, you're wrong. And for my last head to Italy I give you Lake Como. as slow as I can legally. We can't fall over here. Yeah. Welcome to Switzerland. Yeah. <laughs> that, that border crossing from Italy to here in Switzerland marks the last time that uh, I'll have had to go to Italy with this coach. And uh, for anyone that's seen the Italian drivers the last few days, you'll understand my glee. Thank you very much for sharing that with me. We got through clear as a bell, by the way. No need for any passport checks or anything like that, so that's all good, thanks. And this, of course, is Lucerne. We've seen Lucerne often enough in the video in the past, our night stop here in Switzerland. And uh, this behind me is the Chapel Bridge. Switzerland is immaculate and so well organised, which is such a breath of fresh air having come from uh, Italy. On the other side of the scale, it's very expensive here. And obviously the uh, locals live pretty well. It's a 550 Marinello Ferrari. And that over the background there, in the coach park, is not. Lesson con services in Francais. It's another beautiful bloody day. The Sun King from Perth has done it again. Self-proclaimed, of course. Bernie's doing Lockie and uh, Mo and Tiki on the dash for the day. 
And right next to us here we've got a truckload of uh, Mercedes. Probably bound for Putty, just like us. Yes. Made in the Deutsch. That's the neat new C222 door coupe. It's got like a four and a half litre V8 in it. We're just checking out our cars. That's it. <laughs> Which is, oh, there you go, that's mine. Like, that one there? Yeah. That's the door symbol for the Photo of the signs. Paris. The lovely Pripyat. A ring road around Paris. Of course, every single continuing drive and many dramas. And there are no exceptions. And that's the reason why, as you can see up ahead of us, traffic, 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 traffic. Seven million cars in Paris. Something like that anyway. Nimzo will probably correct me, but lots and lots and lots. And not a lot of space to put them. They have no idea how to drive, probably. If they did, I don't think things would be as congested. But I took their personal opinion. So uh, doing battle here is interesting. You see how they're trying to fit three to two? Nothing unusual. I've got to put my coach in there somehow. Oh. One last look at the igloos today. Quick, 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 quick. Jack's going home, you've got to get them a photo with us. Quickly! Quickly! Any time today! <laughs> got any nards? Good one. Hang no. on, one more, one more. Thank you. Hey! Thank you. We're illegally parked here in front of the Iglista Dome, which is where Napoleon Bonaparte lies. Thank you, sweetie. Welcome. All good. And we're travelling today with uh, Nards and Colin Hogg, who I trained with. The big fella's last tour of duty. There we are, there's Carl. He's a legend. The big man's last tour of duty. <laughs> His last tour of duty. Let's go and have a look at the Eiffel Tower, Carl. There it is over in the distance. Uh, the tallest uh, structure in Paris. It's called Montparnasse Tower. Well, it's my 22nd and possibly last time to Paris, certainly for the foreseeable future. Uh, I'm really enjoying it tonight, even though the traffic is causing me even more grey hairs than I already have. It's a bittersweet place. It is the most beautiful city I've ever been to, but a nightmare to drive, a real nightmare, especially one of these coaches. They're just crazy, absolutely insane. It's something I've never really been able to catch on the video. But um, it's been a pleasure the last three years to come to this city and uh, see some of the reasons why it's held in such high esteem throughout the world. Got the 
waiting on the Champs Elysees. Thanks for having me, guys. The fountain is where they used to have the guillotine here in Place de la Concorde. It's where Louis the Sixteenth and Maria Antoinette were beheaded. Of course, a famous little tower in the background. Famous 3,600-year-old obelisk. It took four years to transfer from Egypt 300 years ago. As we look up the Champs to the Arc de Triomphe. on the Arc de Triomphe roundabout, as you can see. What does this play on the Arc de Triomphe? And um, the last one? And on to the Champs Elysees. She can drive a coach, she'd be fucked. She'd be fucked. She'd sit up. Well, here we are sitting at uh, Chez Clément, our favourite restaurant here in Paris, on the Champs Elysees. That's the uh, trail. This is large. Of course, we know MJ quite well. Hello. And this is Cole. Hi, Mum and Dad. The and uh, John Paul Young is playing on the radio. Right. Oui. That's what we're eating. It's called the beef rotisserie. Eat nuts. Then we've got the same. Oh. <laughs> we just dropped it everywhere. Mm. Dessert bowl. Cream boule, which is like a custard, like an egg custard, flamed on the top to get the crusty sugar topping. MJ? A chocolate surprise. Oh, Beautiful. Rich, dark chocolate to tantalise the taste buds. This on top. And now it's what she's packed. Well, here we have a, um, a plethora of sweetness with a pinch of alcoholism. It is called a big fuck of pancake. And I've got the, uh, the custard as well. And in the middle, oh, yeah. a selection of other desserts that is for when we finish our first dessert. And here we just go. to remind her, we're on the Shrubs Lise and that is the Arc de Triomphe. Oh man, that's strong. <laughs> Not the flashiest cab we'll ever get into. Bonjour. Hey, c'est bon, c'est bon, c'est bon, c'est bon, c'est bon, it's all good. C'est bon, c'est bon, you never close your eyes, oh. I said to, I said to Nard, fuck this waiting, let's just go get in the cab and go. I said, have you got any money? She says, nah. I said, neither have I. I said, we better sing for a supper then. So she starts singing. Give us that low and feel on the top of her bloody voice. <laughs> bloody Mary. Never close your eyes. Can't take the bastards anyway. Oh, and I kiss your lips. Anyway, on the right hand side voice. here is uh, <laughs> where awesome. President Jacques Chirac lives. No, it's not. Unfortunately. How do you know that? Have you seen him in there, Jack? No, I don't. Mean, it's all bullshit, I know. I'm trying to divert. Yeah. Actually, I've never seen there. Potential yeah. assassins, of which there are plenty lining up. Is it in that octagon building there? It must be. That oh, was about still day when we were here. Got tr they tried to assassinate him. Oh, is that right, Cole? Yeah, the day, we're, the day of Anzac Day. Or oh, The next right. day, the following day or something, they tried, someone tried to shoot him. Oh, Jesus. They should have put a bullet in there. So I, <laughs> I agree. Well, He's not good for much of it. It's my last day. Morning all. It's my last day on the job. Thank you. You've been a fantastic audience all too long. Thanks for a great, memorable last tour. All good.
Every fucking city by Paul Kelly. The last day. March 29, 2003. I'm away from Paris to Calais, London. All the Kentucky tours that travel from Paris to Calais stop here at Vimy Ridge, which is in the Somme region. They had uh, a huge battle in 1917. The English Channel for the last time. Pretty misty today, visibility's down. Isn't it, no? Um, yes, mate, yes, it is. And yeah, we've just eaten on the boat. Wow. So, you're on camera. They go to 70 pounds, which means 35 pounds each. 35 pounds each? I only said 25. <laughs> nice one, payday. I would just like to. Um... <laughs> Oh, it's US 20. Something to do with the Twin Towers, right? Here they are, on fire. Oh! Oh, what's that you say? I'm looking for you to do. Oh, that's disgraceful. And there's the Pentagon. On fire. The Calais Dover Ferry, MJ. It was a good group, we didn't receive much of a tip though, which is a bit disappointing, but anyway, we don't do the job for that, do we? Um, just met one of the guys, ironically the training trip leaves tomorrow, with my good mate Kent Wilson Arnold driving, and uh, while doing the driver training, Chris Trelogan, the tour manager trainer, I just met one of the tour manager trainees, and I said, are you looking forward to it? And I thought to myself, don't you dare say you are, and sure he didn't, he said he was very apprehensive, and took me back to when I, uh, when I started, of course, I started thinking about it, but I'm glad it's all behind me. It's been a fantastic experience, but uh, on the other side of it, there's certain things I won't miss, that's for sure. But there's no sadness or anything like that, in case of uh, the next step of, the, of my life has to be uh, gotten on with. And uh, I'll always look back on it with extreme fondness. I only remember the good times, of course. If you told me four years ago that this is what I would have been doing, I would never have believed it. Let alone five, six, eight years ago. And here we are in London. At the end. And that's it. One of the uh, less glamorous jobs with Kentucky is cleaning the coach. It uh, really has given me the shits over the years. Sometimes it can be quite relaxing, but generally I prefer to be doing something else while I'm relaxing. 7.25 p.m. March 29, 2003. Cleaning completed. And that is a Kentucky career done and dusted. It's been all good. <laughs>